Okay, welcome back after break. So just before the break, we um, <clears throat> what were we looking at? <laughs> yeah, looking at the kingdom of God, but oh yes, a new perspective. So what were we looking at from a new perspective? The plan of uh, redemption. Okay, so what really was God's redemption plan? It was not just about saving us from sin, salvation, and from Satan, uh, but also we are looking at it from two other angles, okay, from the concept that we are studying about the kingdom of God. So we see that when Adam and Eve sinned, they gave over their dominion, the authority and power to Satan, okay? So Satan gained control over the whole earth. It was a temporary control, okay? And secondly, man's concept of being a... Yes, uh, we, were, uh, we were created to be kings. We were created to be heirs of God. But we came into a mindset or a mentality of being slaves or being subjects to... Um, uh, to, uh, to sin and to uh, Satan. And this was not what God intended for us. What did he basically intend for us as people of his kingdom? To be heirs of his kingdom, people who would work with him, rule and govern the whole earth. That was his intent. But this was marred, which means this was uh, harmed or damaged or, uh, you know, this was injured, this was stained. Um, so I believe that in redemption, you know, God also wants to restore these two things. So in redemption, God wants to restore back these two things. Of course, there's a lot of other things that God restored uh, in redemption, or he wanted to restore in redemption, but he also wanted to restore these two uh, things, which is, what's the first one? That the authority be given back to man so who was the authority given to in the new testament church. that yes the church okay the keys of the authority is given to the church and the church consists of whom yes you and i okay we are the part of the church okay and he also wants us to change our understanding our mindset that we are no longer subjects to sin, to slave, uh, or being slaves of sin, being slaves of Satan, but coming to a place where we recognize our position, our authority, our power, and the dominion that we have as heirs of God and co-heirs with Jesus Christ. Okay. Now, um, it's difficult for us, for some of us to transition or to move from this mindset because we were all once in darkness we were all king living under the kingdom of satan we were all slaves and subjects to satan but now when we become now when we become you know uh, uh, part of the kingdom of God, you know, where our identity is that we are heirs of God and co-heirs with his kingdom. And he's given us his domain, his rule, his authority. You know, it's very difficult for us to transition from this mindset that, hey, you know, sin has control over my life. Satan is more powerful. You know, Satan can bring curses or Satan has power and that is why all these things are happening but we need to move from that mindset that we originally had because that was God's original plan in uh, redemption so after fall we see that the kingdom of God is being uh, in, reintroduced at the coming of Jesus Christ and who is the forerunner of Jesus John the Baptist and John the Baptist comes and prepares the way for the coming of the uh, Savior. So what was the message of John the Baptist? Let's look at Matthew chapter 3, verse 2. Okay, Matthew chapter 3, verse 2. What does it say? Can somebody read? Yeah. 
as it says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It does not say kingdom of God, it says kingdom of heaven, but kingdom of God and kingdom of heaven are synonymously used, interchangeably used, so it means one and the same. So here it means that repent for the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God is here. So what he's saying is the kingdom of heaven has come. Okay, the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God is invading our fallen world. Okay, did Jesus create, did God create a fallen world? No, it did not create a fallen world. Uh, did he f create a fallen kingdom? No, we see that uh, we, we looked at in, um, in Matthew chapter 25, verse 20, 34, that, you know, it was in the intent of the heart of God uh, to have a kingdom even before the foundation of the world and when adam and eve fell it does not mean that god's kingdom also fell okay it just means that they lost their original position their uh, authority their dominion was given to satan and they also you know um, were in a state where they were no longer kings or heirs but they came into a very fallen um, state okay but here we see that god is reintroducing his kingdom because that was in his original heart okay that after you know redemption god's kingdom would be uh, introduced so it was in his heart to have a kingdom prepared for people would be heirs will inherit that kingdom and who would be heirs with him so when jesus comes along right after john the baptist we look at his message in uh, matthew chapter 4 verse 17. What does Matthew chapter 4 verse 17 says? From the time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Amen. So what does Jesus began to preach? He says, Repent for the kingdom of, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Okay, the same thing what John the Baptist also preached was the forerunner. He says in Matthew chapter 3, verse 2, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What is the meaning of the kingdom of God is at hand? It's coming soon. Okay. The kingdom of heaven is at hand means what? Started. It is within your reach. It is coming into your world it is something within your reach it's coming into your world so what is coming what is uh, within their reach what is coming into the world the kingdom of heaven okay so even as you and i read the gospels we see jesus speaking so much about the kingdom of god or the kingdom of heaven, heaven okay uh, yes he mentioned a little bit about the church but we see that he mostly talked about how the kingdom of God is or how it will be or the dynamics of it or the dimension or how the kingdom of God operates or the, how the kingdom of heaven operates. And he talks about this in various parables. Okay. So Jesus was basically saying, okay, you know, I'm going to tell you another secret about this kingdom. And then he gives us another story or he gives us another parable that tells us how the kingdom of God is like and uh, you know all the parables that he uh, reveals to us or he talks to us it unveils the different aspects about the kingdom of god okay so we see that he spent most of his time jesus spent most of his time preaching and teaching on the kingdom of god or the kingdom of heaven okay look at what matthew chapter 4 verse 23 says jesus went about announcing the good news of the kingdom of god so can one of you please read take the mic please and read matthew chapter 4 verse 23 and jesus went about all galilee teaching in their synagogues preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all kind of sickness and all kind of disease among the people so in the same chapter, we looked at Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. Now we're looking at verse 23. The same chapter just tells us about the ministry of Jesus. It says that Jesus went about all Galilee, you know, teaching in the synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, okay, the kingdom of God. So what was he proclaiming? 
is proclaiming the good news of what? The kingdom. It wasn't the good news of the church, but it was the good news of the kingdom. Well, by saying that this is not the good news of the church, I don't want to downplay uh, the church, but I want to highlight the fact that you know the kingdom of God is something that is very, very important because we downplay it, we undermine it, we don't think that as that of you know great significance and priority. So we see that Jesus proclaimed the gospel of the kingdom, and also what did he do? He teaching, he healed the sick. And all those who were, uh, you know, inflicted with various diseases and uh, and he healed all of them. Okay. So the king of the kingdom, when Jesus came into this world, God incarnate, the king of the kingdom, you know, stepped into the world uh, to re recover the people of his kingdom who he sees as uh, hairs of God and co hairs with Jesus Christ, you know, to recover the people whom he intended to be his hairs of the kingdom. Okay, so Jesus God came, became man, and he personally came to usher in the kingdom of God over the earth where he intended um, to have his kingdom executed where he wanted his kingdom reign rule his presence his government uh, to be ushered in he wanted uh, you know uh, to have a kingdom uh, where he wanted us to be heirs of the kingdom but when many earthly kings we see when you know when they intend uh, to have a you know a kingdom or when they intend to rule over a certain realm uh, what do they do when a king wants to, you know, conquer another nation or another kingdom, what does he basically do? He goes for battle. He goes for war. Um, uh, so we see that, you know, um, they go for battle, they go for war. Um, uh, but sometimes the king also just sends his spies or he just sends his army okay he just sends his army which is led by the captain to conquer his kingdom like king saul sent a uh, david to win uh, to fight many um, battles okay but however we see that the king of the kingdom of god or the kingdom of heaven is very very different okay we also saw what was the difference in you know, the first hour, but we also see that, yes, Jesus sent, uh, or God sent a forerunner uh, named John the Baptist to announce his kingdom, but then we see that God or the king of the kingdom personally comes uh, into this earth and he reveals to us, okay, he reveals to us firsthand, you know, the nature of this kingdom. Okay, so when we see the king of the kingdom come, the son of man come, it was basically Jesus showing us how the kingdom of God is or um, what is the nature of the kingdom of God or how the kingdom of God operates. Okay, so we see that modeled in the king. So the king himself comes, the king himself comes firsthand and reveals to us uh, the nature of the kingdom, what it would be like. Uh, to live in this kingdom, what it would be like to operate as part of this kingdom here on earth. So for us, it's not going to be very difficult to know, hey, what is this kingdom? How should we operate? How should we live? Uh, what are some of the things we should follow? What are the do's and don'ts? But everything we see already modeled in the, the king of the kingdom who came and lived here on the earth. So Jesus modeled to us the kingdom of heaven here on earth. And then he left us an open invitation for those who are interested to be part of this kingdom. Yes, we see in Genesis chapter 1, we saw in 27 and 28, that when, when God created man and woman, he said, have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over everything that is there on the um, earth. He gave us that dominion and that authority. But then we passed on that authority to Satan, and he's in control for the time being. But we see that many of them are still under the dominion of Satan. And so here 
is the king who is coming to usher back his kingdom, his bringing back his rule and reign. And here is an invitation. Okay, so it is a choice that we have to make. So God has given us the free will to choose from the very beginning, even as Adam and Eve had the free will to choose. So the kingdom of God is not forced upon us. It's not, it's just not pushed upon us, but it's a choice that we make. So all of you here who are listening to this lecture have basically made a choice to be part of the kingdom of God. You have said yes to the invitation and you are part of this uh, kingdom. Okay. So we looked at how, um, you know, uh, we looked at this powerful verse in, um, in, um, uh, Matthew chapter 25 verse 34 where we saw that the kingdom was planned even before the foundation of the world and then we saw how God executing or bringing about his kingdom uh, right there in Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 and 28 when he created Adam and Eve he gave them dominion but we see how the kingdom uh, of God uh, you know was uh, the, the authority and dominion that Adam and Eve was passed on to Satan, but we know that God was not taken aback by this because he knew and the plan of redemption was already in the heart and the mind and the intent of God. And so he goes about bringing about his plan of redemption. Now in the plan of redemption, there are many facets or different aspects, but we saw just two aspects of it. What are those two aspects? The first one is, Yes, that the kingdom of God is now, the domain has been given back to man, that is to the church. Okay, that is one of the aspects of redemption of the many other different aspects. And what is the second thing? Yes, to bring us back to that mindset that we are not slaves or subjects, but we are heirs of God and co-heirs with Jesus Christ. So that is what we looked at in the first few um, chapters in, uh, sorry, first few pages in chapter one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So Nina, John, it's okay. So, uh, you know, we missed you in the first class. I was wondering what happened. Um, but you can always listen to the lecture. It will be posted on the stream page in uh, Google Classroom. But welcome to class. Okay. So we look at... Um, the spiritual and the natural dimensions of the kingdom of God. Okay. Now in the Bible, we see there is both the spiritual kingdom and the natural kingdom. So the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven has both the spiritual and the natural dimension. Okay. The spiritual dimension means what? When we talk about the spiritual dimension, what do we mean? Can anyone... share what it means. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven has both these dimensions, the spiritual dimension and the natural. What do you think is a spiritual dimension? Very good. Thank you, Nina Santosh. So this, the spiritual dimension is basically has to do with the the rule, the reign, the government, the power of God that is expressed in the hearts and lives of the people. Okay, so that is the spiritual dimension. And what is the nat uh, what is the natural dimension? Okay. Okay, when uh, we see the uh, the spiritual dimension being released in and through our lives in the natural world, in our spheres of influence or wherever God has placed us. Yes, Sarin, what did you say? Okay, where we are placed and where we as sons and daughters execute God's reign, rule, his activity, his government and his um, presence. So what, can you just take the mic please? Yeah, that in physically jesus physical aspect is jesus coming back and ruling over the millennium yes very good that also is a natural aspect of the kingdom where we will see uh, jesus coming 
in the millennium, the thousand, uh, thousand year rule when he will rule, we'll see the natural uh, aspect or the dimension of the kingdom of God. Very good. Okay. Anyone else has any other thoughts? Natural aspect of the kingdom is like uh, how we uh, conduct ourselves, how we live. Okay, how we live, how we conduct ourselves. Okay. So the spiritual aspect or spiritual dimension of the kingdom basically has to do with the rule and the reign of God in the hearts and the lives of people. Okay, so that is a spiritual dimension. What and it's also what you and I are experiencing uh, now. Really, is the rule and the reign of God or the kingdom of God in its spiritual dimension. So what all of us are experiencing now, he okay, is called Augustine Dinesh Kumar. Okay, I really don't know if all of these students are part of the class, but <laughs> okay. So what you and I are experiencing now is really the rule and the reign of God. We're actually experiencing the spiritual dimension of the kingdom of um, God. Okay. But then there is also the natural dimension. Okay. And that is the Okay, somebody has their hands up. Um, just a minute. Okay, no. Okay, I thought somebody put their hand up. Okay. Yeah, there's a question. What's the question? In the meanwhile, don't we represent the kingdom of God till Jesus comes? Yes, we do. We are because we're experiencing the spiritual dimension of the kingdom, but it's not just the kingdom that is in our hearts and in our lives. Like we said in class one, um, Ina John, you were not there in the first class. So we said that it's, uh, you know, uh, God's kingdom rule and reign in our hearts and lives, uh, which then translates out through our hearts, through our lives, into the spheres of influence that God has placed us or in the places where God has um, put us in the realm of authority. We are through our lives, uh, you know, uh, we are to bring out God's rule, reign, government, his presence here on the earth. Yes. Uh, did that help, uh, Nina John? Yes, so thank yes, you. The, the church. Sorry. Yeah. Yes, go ahead, Nina. Okay. Yes, Sean. What would that be, spiritual or uh, natural? Um, yeah, both, because you see that in the natural, but not, see, when you're talking about the natural dimension, let me tell you what the natural dimension of the kingdom is, then you'll be able to understand, okay? So uh, there is also the natural dimension of the kingdom of God, which we will see when Jesus returns in the battle of the Armageddon, and where he overthrows the armies of the earth and he establishes his own kingdom in Jerusalem. Just like Nina John said, sorry, Nina Santos said, uh, in the thousand year rule. Okay, before the thousand year rule, we see the king of the kingdom coming and fighting the battle, uh, the, the battle of the Armageddon, where he will overthrow the enemies of this world and he will establish his kingdom, his physical kingdom. So that time we will see the physical, natural aspects of the kingdom of um, God here on the earth in 
Jerusalem. And of course, we, uh, we see this uh, prophesied or revealed to us in Daniel chapter 7. Uh, so it, in, it is very interesting because it tells us this kingdom in Daniel chapter 7 tells us this kingdom will be given to saints. It will be given to saints. Uh, Saint Nickel, Saint uh, Nick, uh, Nickel, right? Saint Nickel, Saint Francis, Saint Saint uh, Prince, Saint Sean, Saint uh, uh, Sri Radha, Saint uh, uh, Nina Santos, uh, uh, Saint Rin, and will be given to all of uh, you know the online students. Uh, Saint Chira, Saint uh, Jacket, <laughs> Saint uh, Nina John, and Shiv Kumar, and all of us who are saints, Daniel chapter 7 says that, you know, um, that the kingdom of God will be given to the saints, okay? And we will administer the kingdom of God. Jackin says amen to that. <laughs> yeah. And we will administer, and even Chira says amen, okay? And we will also administer the kingdom of God. So just look at God's amazing plan, purpose, his heart, his thoughts towards you and me. And that is what God intended. He, he intended a kingdom prepared for people who will be his, who will inherit his kingdom and also help administer that kingdom. Okay, so if you are somebody who is working very hard for the kingdom of God and you think that nobody recognizes you, okay, we, we look at many missionaries, many evangelists, many men and women of God. We don't see them here, you know, um, uh, on uh, wall hangings like we have some of them in our um, in our Bible college, some of you will do great things for God, you know, in a small way, in a big way. You'll go unnoticed. You will not be hanging like these uh, great uh, missionaries like David Livingston and, you know, uh, the others, you know. But you would do great things for God and you think like, hey, nobody is rewarding me. Where is my reward? Sometimes it can be very frustrating, you know. But we need to know that in the thousand-year millennium rule, how faithful we have been to what God has entrusted to us, big or small, however faithful we have been, we will receive our re reward. And some of you will be given positions in the thousand-year millennium rule where you will be administers or administrators in God's kingdom. We will be people who will be ruling the natural kingdom. So who will be those people who are ruling the natural kingdom? You know, it's, it's based on how faithful you have been here now in what God has entrusted to you and what he has given to um, you, okay? So, um, you know, um, there will be this literal dimension of the kingdom which will happen sometime way into the future. But right now, what you and I are experiencing, what you and I are walking in is the spiritual aspect of the kingdom of God. And uh, that is what we are going to be focusing on in the next several weeks as we continue to be talking about the kingdom of God. We will be basically focusing on the spiritual dimension of this kingdom. And we will also see how this spiritual aspect of the kingdom of God, how it affects your life and my life on a daily basis. What does it mean to us? And then before we just conclude this book, we will spend one or two just classes just talking about the natural or the literal kingdom. But our focus in this publication or in this book will be basically on the spiritual aspect of the kingdom of God where we are talking about God's rule, reign in the hearts and in the lives of people. Okay? Yes, Prince. I'm like, uh, as we are talking about natural uh, aspect of the kingdom, like, uh, like you just told like about how God, Jesus comes and uh, uh, reigns. Ushers in the kingdom of God? Uh, yes, ma'am. So, like, uh, my question is uh, people getting healed or... Uh, they're receiving some miracles. Is it also a natural aspect of the kingdom or is it spiritual aspect? That is what the spiritual, it is a spiritual aspect, but that is translated in the natural. We see that happening in the natural. Okay. So it's not that it's, that we don't see anything in the natural. It's all just happening in our hearts and lives. No, it is, it is birthed out of 
the Holy Spirit is birthing it out of from our hearts and lives, but we see that in our spheres. We're actually ushering the kingdom of God, his rule and reign. We see it. We need to see it in the uh, uh, in the natural, but the, the fullness of the natural aspect or dimension of the kingdom will, of God will be seen when the king himself will come and rule in the kingdom. Okay, but uh, where is, uh, you know, we are born again in our spirit man. Where is God? In us. Is he is in us, right? So it is it is him working in and through our lives, and that is seen out in the natural. But then we will see the fullness of the natural aspects, the natural dimension of the kingdom of God when the king himself comes to rule and reign here on the earth. His very presence ruling and reigning on the earth. So coming back to Sean's question about Moses, you know, yes, Moses, the glory of God was just reflected on his. Face. But also we know that God has given us uh, his sonship glory, right? We learned in Christology, John chapter 17, uh, we've been given the sonship glory. And we see the glory of God manifested in and through our lives, who we are and what we do, okay? Through the fruit of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. Yeah. Any other questions? So that is the spiritual aspect. So that would be the spiritual aspect then of uh, Moses when it comes to Moses. That would be the spiritual dimension of the kingdom of God, you're saying? Yes. Is, 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 no, I'm asking, is, is that, that a spiritual uh, dimension or uh, natural? So in the end, is it this, it is a spiritual dimension? What? Uh, and it is spiritual and it's also seen in the natural, right? But it was a fading glory. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. But we are, I can't really say that what Moses was the son should we say spiritual or natural he was just experiencing the presence of God it was God just revealing himself to man okay so how do we enter this kingdom it's a choice that we make okay uh, being part of this kingdom but how do we enter into this kingdom when we are born a Again, okay, let's look at uh, John chapter 3, uh, verse um, 3. Okay, John chapter 3, verses 3 and verse 5. Because Can somebody read that, please? Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit he cannot enter the kingdom kingdom of God. So here Jesus says, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Okay. So it means to be a partaker of or to be part of the kingdom. It says that you must be born again. Okay. And when you're born again, you become part of the kingdom. And it says here that you have to be born from above okay so it's basically to receive spiritual transformation uh, that only god can impart into the human heart okay and it is through the work of the holy spirit and it is through the work of his word so the work of his word and the power of his word and the power of the holy spirit is what brings about this transformation or this change in the human heart, okay? So even as we are born again, we are ushered into the kingdom of God, we begin to experience the kingdom of God in its spiritual dimension, working uh, within us, working within our hearts, our lives, and then it's, you know, it reaches out to every facets of uh, our lives on this earth here. And uh, it also shows us that we are in his kingdom and his kingdom is in us. Okay. Um, now, when somebody is born again, what is the first thing that we do? How do we help them?
Okay, when somebody is born again, what is the first thing that we do? Yeah, what is the process? What is a few? They accept the as their Lord and Savior, and then what do they do? Okay, we lead them in a salvation prayer, and then what do we? Do? How do we help them? Baptism. Okay. Okay, we give them a basic understanding. You need to use the mic. We give them a basic understanding of the word and all of those things. We share a Bible with them. What else do we do? Okay, we invite them to church, right? <laughs> we introduce them to a church, isn't that right? Okay, we help them find a local church where they can be plugged in, where they can be connected where they can continue to learn, to fellowship, uh, to receive, to be built in, and, you know, people can impart into their lives. But really, when a person is born again, they are actually brought into where? The kingdom of God. And we don't talk about the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven to them, right? Uh, but they have been ushered into the kingdom of God. And I think we need to start doing that okay we need to start telling people that hey now you no longer belong to this world you're no longer a citizen of this world but you're a citizen of heaven you belong to the kingdom of god you are heirs of god and co-heirs with jesus christ look at how paul put it in colossians chapter 1 verse 13 and 14 or 12 and 13 as well 12 and 13 sorry can somebody read that? Colossians chapter 1, verse 12 and 13. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. Amen. So when we got saved, what did God do? He did something, right? What did He do? He delivered us from darkness. He transferred us or joined us or made us part of his kingdom. So now we are part of the kingdom of God and the kingdom of God is where? Within us. Okay, you've been born into that kingdom. Okay, and now we live lives as sons and daughters who are to manifest the kingdom dimension or the kingdom aspect to rule the reign the government in every area of our lives okay so this is one of our objectives as we study uh, uh, the word of god together and we study about the kingdom of god we want the kingdom of god or whatever is in whatever is in that kingdom that is in uh, within us to be manifested in our everyday life so this should be one of our objectives even as we are studying the kingdom of god as he's studying about the word of god you know that whatever is put in us the kingdom of god that is within us should be manifested in our everyday lives okay now let's look at one of the parables jesus taught many parables about the kingdom of god or the kingdom of heaven but we look at one of the parables okay the parable in matthew chapter 13 verses um 36 to 40. It's the parable of the wheat and the tares. Okay, the parable of the wheat and the tares. And um, Jesus is saying that there was a man who had a field and he went out and sowed what kind of seed? Good seed or bad seed? Good seed. And uh, he was expecting wheat in his field so the seed that he sowed was wheat and he was looking for the uh, wheat uh, plants to come out and the grains to come out so we see that you know the plant springs up but then the enemy comes along and starts to sow tears in that field and the tears also spring up that means it's weeds you know comes and grows alongside the the wheat the plant the you know, and then he uh, concludes the story 
And when he concludes this parable or the story, his disciples come to him later and ask him, what is the meaning of this story? Or what is the meaning of this parable? And here's what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 13, verses 36 to 40. Okay, so can somebody read that, please? Matthew 13, 36 to 40. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house. And his disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said to them, He who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the sons of the kingdom, but the tares are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is is in the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in fire, so it will be at the end of this age. So here, uh, thank you, here in a little picture, Jesus is describing to us the entire scenario of what is going to happen in the world right now, or what will happen in the end times, okay? And I want to bring your attention to a few things. The first thing is that the Son of Man, that is Jesus Christ, is sowing what kind of seed? Good seed. And who are the good seeds? Yes, we, sons and daughters of the kingdom. So I want you to picture yourself as this, that you are a son and daughter of the kingdom of God, okay, uh, and God is sowing you as good seeds. So each one of you are good seeds that is being sown into this world by Jesus himself, okay, and um, he's put that, which means he's put you in this world for a reason and for a purpose, okay, and then he tells us that there are only Two kinds of people on this earth. So who are the two kinds of people? Yeah, sons of sons and daughters of God, or sons and daughters of the kingdom of God, uh, and sons and daughters of the wicked one. There are no hybrids. You can't be both, right? You can't be both. You know, one like this side, one like that side, one eye here, one eye there. You know, you have to make a choice. You're either the son of the kingdom, or the daughter of the kingdom, or you're the son and daughter of the wicked one. Full stop. There's nothing more that we can go ahead or we can say about that. So you're either wheat or you're either tares. Okay. But as a believer, you are the sons and daughters of the kingdom and you have been sown into this world by Jesus Christ himself. Okay. And I want to highlight this to you. That your purpose in this world is connected to the very fact that you are sons and daughters of the kingdom of God. Okay. That is the only reason that you are here. Okay. The only reason that you are here is to fulfill your purpose that you are a son and daughter of the kingdom. Okay. Which means saying that, yes, having an education is important. You know, having a good job is important. But that is that is good. You need to have a good job. You need to have a good education. But above that, the greater, the bigger picture, the greater purpose that is your mission here on earth and is described by the fact that you are a son and daughter of the kingdom of God. So your purpose is not defined by your education. It's not defined by your job. It's not even defined by your career. Or oh, what you are doing here on this earth, your purpose, your mission is this, that you are a son and daughter of the kingdom of God. And that defines everything that you do here. Yes, your job, your career, your um, education are all means through which you express this fact that you are a son and daughter of the kingdom of God. So all these are tools or means through which you are uh, bringing about the kingdom of God or you are expressing this fact that you are a son and daughter of the kingdom of God. So all these are avenues, they are places, they are venues to the fact that you are the seed that is sown by the 
by God himself, by the king of this kingdom himself, that is Jesus Christ on this earth, and you are, and it's being expressed through you, which means you are being put on display. Okay, you've been put on display. Okay, so in this first challenge, uh, first lesson, you know, I just want to challenge you with this. Um, you know, I want you to be challenged, or I want you to challenge you with this fact or this truth that we need to operate from a kingdom of God's perspective. Okay, so if you are a son and daughter of the kingdom of God, how would you live your life? Or how would you operate? If you saw everything from this perspective, that you are a son and daughter of the kingdom of God, what would you do? If you have this perspective, where would you go? Okay, Or what would you strive for? Or where would you invest your time and your energy and your, if, uh, your efforts if you saw yourself as the son and daughter of the kingdom of God? God, because this is God's mandate for you. This is God's mandate for me. This is God's plan, his purpose for you and me. Because he wanted to prepare a kingdom of people who will inherit his kingdom, would be heirs with him in that kingdom. And that is what God is unfolding right now in and through you and me. Okay, So each one of us have been born again. We have made this choice to be part of the kingdom of God and the kingdom is in you. So the question now is, you know, would you and I want to or like to or desire to live from this kingdom perspective? Okay, this is something that you need to answer your, uh, for yourself. This is what you need to think for yourself, you know. Would you and I, uh, you know, choose to live as sons and daughters of the kingdom? Or would we choose to continue live, living with that slave mentality that we are slaves and, you know, we are under the power and dominion of Satan and uh, sin? Or would we come to a place where we choose to see, hey, you know, I'm a son and daughter of God, I'm a heir of God and co heirs with uh, Jesus Christ. And if you choose to live out of this mentality, from this kingdom of God perspective, you know, I want you to think, what would you want to change in your life? What are some of the things that you want to change in your life? Just take a moment to think. Or how would life change for you and me if we are going to live from this kingdom perspective? For some of us, it will be changing our mindset, right? We'll think of us more very lowly, very small about ourselves. I want you to think how would you and I live out of that kingdom perspective? Yes. Yes, thank you. Thinking from a higher plane, a higher perspective of how God sees us and thinks about us. Some of us should rise up, you know, from that pit of miry clay and where we look at ourselves uh, very low and very demeaning way. You know, we need to be kind to ourselves and think of how God thinks about us. Anyone from um, the online class would like to share? How would you and I live out of that kingdom perspective? Or what would uh, you know you do to make the changes to live as a son and daughter? Or how would life change if you and I live from that kingdom perspective?
I think we'll, we would look at life with a totally new, different meaning, right? That we have this power, we have this authority. Uh, yes. I think we can take an example from the Bible itself when you come to the 12 apostles. Like before, who were they before Jesus? Who were they after Jesus? Like you can take uh, Matthew himself. Matthew was a tax collector. But after Jesus, he became the apostle. He began to preach the word of God. You know, tax collectors weren't that well liked within the uh, with the people. You know, they mo most of them didn't, uh, didn't like him for various reasons. But God chose him, an outcast from the Pharisees and uh, the teacher of the law. They said, why were you I mean, associating with such a person? But that's why he says, "I've uh, come. I've I've come to um, take outcast. Uh, I've come here to take outcasts in. I've uh, I've come. I've not come here to um, just take for sinners and not for the righteous. Yes. yes, yes. Okay. We'll thank you, Sean. We run out of time. But Jackin says, renewing my mind every day based on the truth of God's word, what He thinks should matter to me. That even uh, that even that of what my loved ones think about me. Yes, what the world says about me." You know, it's not what I am, but what God thinks and says about me. Nina John says, God has entrusted the work of the kingdom to us when he ascended into heaven and also empowered us with the Holy Spirit. So we need to keep looking to the word, get instruction and seek first the kingdom of God to the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jacqueline and Nina. Thank you all for joining class. Uh, live from that kingdom perspective. Make those changes and those mindsets. And um, I'll see you next week. Okay, have a blessed day and the week ahead. God bless. Thank you.